Hi guys, it's ASBYT and this is the Huawei MateBook 14. It's a very intriguing laptop for reasons which we'll get to, a bit of a complicated masterpiece if you will. I'm sure it's going to be very popular for those of you looking to get a brand new laptop at the end of 2020 and the start of 2021, as it combines a great design, pretty impressive performance and a compellingly affordable price compared to the likes of the MacBook Air, which is also one of the most popular products in this field. But it's not all perfect and there are a few drawbacks which you will need to know if you are indeed looking to possibly pick one of these up because they may be deal breakers for you. Thanks to Huawei for sponsoring today's video but as always on this channel all views are my own both good and bad. So firstly let's start with one of the big positives and that is of course the design. This is a real thing of beauty. Classy, stylish, minimal, yet angular and racy. The Huawei logo in a glossy finish also looks clean and fairly understated. And underneath you have the rubber strips to stop it from slipping on a desk, the speaker grills, more on sound quality later, and the fan grill for your heat dissipation as well. You will also see here the Windows logo sticker, Windows 10 of course, pre-installed, and an AMD Radeon graphics sticker as well, and more on performance in a second. Type-C and HDMI port as well as a headphone jack on one side and two USB Type-A ports on the other. I'm glad they didn't just go with Type-C everywhere and they have included a few more ports, but I would have liked to have seen an SD card slot for obvious reasons. For content creators, it's great. And I would have liked to have seen maybe one more Type-C port because if you're charging the MateBook, you then don't have a spare Type-C port, which is not ideal. If we lift the lid, this is where the Huawei MateBook 14 excels and compromises all in one. Firstly, again, in keeping with the rest of the design, the display is simply stunning. It's a 14 inch glossy IPS screen with a resolution of 2160 by 1440 and a 100% sRGB color gamut, a TUV Rhineland low blue light certification and a 90% screen to body ratio. So this thing is really nice and sharp, comforting on the eyes too if you apply certain settings and the bezels are absolutely tiny. Now it's not the brightest with a typical 300 nits, but it's a 10 point multi-touch sensitive screen. So if you want to use your hands or the Huawei pen for finer, more accurate touches, you can do. Now using a touch screen is not something that I do massively on a laptop, but this is a good example of one that works very well with a nice stiff hinge that doesn't wobble much. And if you're a graphic designer or an artist, or you just want that additional functionality, this is another added bonus. Personally, I prefer glossy screens to matte screens on laptops, they just feel a little bit brighter and sharper for me. But if you are somebody, 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 if you are somebody who works in a lot of bright conditions outside, for example, and there's a lot of glare, then matte screens tend to work better for that. So that is something you will have to consider. The MateBook 14 has a taller and narrower 3x2 aspect ratio, which is great for things like social media, browsing the web, working on documents, for example. But if you are watching a lot of widescreen content, movies, for example, then you will get the black bars at the top and bottom. Not a deal breaker, but just something to note. Now this edge to edge display is possible because we have no webcam at the top, so we can have a really small top bezel. So what Huawei have done they've decided to implement the webcam into the actual keyboard with a nifty little button down here. We've seen it with a few of their products so far. Just give that another go in uh, close up. Ding! <laughs> now, when this design was first implemented, it was quite ingenious, but there are some pros and cons because of it. Number one, if you don't use a webcam much or are privacy aware, you don't have to worry about third parties spying on you because you have no webcam on display that can be potentially hacked. I'm doing quotes that it does happen, but very rarely, but that is a possibility that you won't get with this when of course it is down. But if you do intend to use it, the 720p camera is not the sharpest of pictures by today's 4K capable external webcam standards, and it's not a great angle either. Staring up at my six lockdown chins is not a good look. Yes, you can stack it on things so it's a bit higher and a bit more flattering on the face. Not ideal. Pros and cons. The rest of the backlit keyboard is really pretty impressive. Really comfortable to type on for long periods with enough travel to the keys without being mushy. Not a huge amount of flex here either. And again, comparing it to the new MacBooks, they feel very similar. Since, of course, Apple updated their keyboards from the issue plague butterfly keys a year or so back. One area that I'm not a massive fan of with the Huawei MateBook 14 is the trackpad. And that's not to say it's necessarily bad. I, I just expect a little bit better. 
The laptop overall is built so well, so premium, that it becomes even more noticeable when something doesn't quite hit the heights. Every now and again you have to click more than once for a click to actually register. I don't know whether it's just my unit or whether this is a common theme, but it's just something that I've noticed and hopefully they can improve that on a future product, as it's such a well used part of the laptop. Outside of that, swipe gestures for navigation on the pad work great, with great accuracy and mistouch prevention, as does the fingerprint scanner on the power button, which is really reliable, quick and useful for powering up and logging on all at the same time. Lift the lid, press and in. Simple as that. Unfortunately, you can't lift the lid with just one hand like you can on some competing brands. Not a biggie, but nice to have if you're juggling some of your kids' toys, a mug of coffee, a plate of food, your pet, all right, Dotty, in one hand and your laptop in the other. So we've talked about the externals, but what about the internals? What about performance? Well, we've got a choice of either the 7 nanometer AMD Ryzen 5 4600H or the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H along with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 or 512 gigabytes of internal SSD storage with AMD Radeon graphics. As a result, it's more than capable for day-to-day -day tasks, workflow, emails, light photo and video editing and gaming. I wouldn't recommend this laptop for those of you who were looking to edit 8K video, for example, or multi-layered 4K at 60 frames a second. But make no mistake, this is a pretty capable machine and stays really nice and cool under pressure thanks to the two Huawei shark fin fans, which feature thinner, denser fins that produce better airflow. There are also a set of six sensors that monitor the thermals, allowing the system to dynamically scale fan speed for optimal cooling. As a result, the fans aren't completely silent and I do sometimes notice them kicking in even when I'm not in really heavy workload, um, but it's fairly quiet as a laptop goes. The only real negative of buying this 2020 MateBook 14 performance wise is simply the fact that Ryzen drop processors like nobody's business. And so even though the powering hardware in here is only six months old, 2021 will have big moves again. And that's simply just one of the negatives of an industry that moves so, so quickly. Of course, one of the big reasons for buying this style of laptop is for its portability. Chuck it in a bag, take it away when we can travel. I make that joke every time, but it's coming. We're going to be able to go soon. So as and when you are going to be traveling and you are going to be taking this with you, how's it going to hold up and what's the battery life going to be like? Well, it has a 56 watt hour battery cell, which should last you up to 10 hours of video playback, according to Huawei. I've got a little bit less than that in everyday use, and there are certainly better laptops out there for sheer battery performance, uh, but for its size, it does a pretty good job. Also, if you are running low on power, the 65 watt charger that comes in the retail box will charge this bad boy. Uh, it will give you two and a half hours of use in just around 15 minutes, which, uh, yeah, pretty good again. So the MateBook 14 starts from £749. That isn't cheap, but I think it represents pretty great value considering you also get a Huawei Sound X smart speaker worth £300 thrown in for free as well on the Huawei Rebs, on the... <laughs> on the Huawei website, I can't speak, on the Huawei website right now. There, we did it. <laughs> I'm not sure how long that is going to last for. It might be a holiday season offer, but it's there at the moment. So that price puts it firmly cheaper than the lowest priced Apple MacBook. So again, if you're not massively swayed by Mac OS and you're kind of on the fence as to whether you prefer Windows or not, then uh, yeah, it's another factor that might interest you. Of course, one of the biggest positives of the MacBooks is the ecosystem that everyone goes on about using iMessage and AirDrop, for example, is absolutely fantastic if you own an iPhone. If you don't own an iPhone, if you're on an Android, for example, those features are nowhere near as important. In fact, they're pretty pointless. And on that note, while we have really been starting to create a pretty great ecosystem of their own, including the popular feature Huawei Share, by enabling NFC and Wi-Fi on a Huawei smartphone and simply tapping the back of the phone against the touchpad, it will pair the two devices instantly. This allows you to use picture-in-picture -picture, so you can cast your smartphone screen to your laptop, transfer files at rapid speeds between the two, and any media saved on your smartphone can be played on the MateBook 14 speakers, which I might add support Dolby Atmos and are pretty decent indeed. Not quite as good as Huawei's top of the line Huawei MateBook X Pro speakers or my 2019 MacBook 16 inch, but yeah. Pretty tasty. One huge advantage of the screencast feature is you can use your laptop almost like you're running an Android emulator. So if you have Android apps that you want to use on a large laptop screen, you can do. And you can also use your MateBook 14 for video and voice calls directly once connected. 
So overall, a really compelling laptop in this space of the market. Um, but back to my original point of it being a complicated masterpiece. And this comment might make more sense when we compare it to the other Huawei laptops in the range of MateBooks. The speakers aren't quite as good and the screen is not quite as bright or sharp as the top of the range MateBook X Pro, but it's more powerful and it's cheaper. There's also no Wi-Fi 6 here, unfortunately, but there is on the standard and even more portable MateBook X. But again, this is cheaper and more powerful than that. It's just all a little bit confusing in that range. Makes it hard for you guys to know which one to buy. There is also no Thunderbolt 3. The display, as stated, is not quite as bright as some others on the market. The webcam will divide opinion one way or the other, and uh, there are bet better, better batteries also available on the market. But all things considered, this is a fantastic and very, very stylish laptop in the mid to upper tier of the uh, market. How many times do you want to say market? You know what I mean? Yeah, in that area, if you look in at the three quarter mark of price to Woo! really great Windows laptop for looks and performance. And when you consider you can get the smart speaker thrown in for £300 for free as well, really great value for money. Like and share if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out some of the other videos uh, if you want to check. I've got to go. I've kids got to go school and that. I love you, Nevi. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.